everybody. Hello, hello, hello. This is Christopher Palaha, and I'm coming to you live on the Palaha Chautauqua. We have um, Ellie. Hello. First in. First in. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, Brenda. Hi. Um, guys, I don't know what's going on with my, my phone. looks a little... I don't know. The lighting, all of it. It just looks yellow. yellow. I'm in a yellow world right now. Um, guys, holy cow. How have you all been? It's been the wildest, uh, f- the wildest, honestly, two months of my life in, in so many ways. Uh, jumping from one project to another. And this second one has been the most fun and also the most grueling job I've ever had in my life. Like this thing is kicking my butt in the best ways. Um, I work with Elizabeth Tabish and Paris Patel, who's in Jesus Revolution that just opened up this week and he's got a he's got a cameo in that. Um, and, and then a young man named Jordan also from The Chosen. Um, Neil McDonough, Sean Astin who I really just loved working with. And of course, Brock, who you guys have gotten to know with his daily, his daily hellos. Um, Brock Heasley, our director, our fearless director, Ed Lucas, our DP, uh, Ken Carpenter, our producer. Like it's just one win after another. Um, And the people that I've been working with have just been truly, truly, truly wonderful to work with. It's been a, a wonderful experience. Um, so work has been good. Family came out last weekend. I got to see my wife and I got to see my babies who aren't babies anymore. They're all grown ass men. Um, and so that's that. And, um, Caleb is so grown that he released his first song, his first single last week on my birthday. And if you haven't heard it yet, I urge you to go to Spotify or Apple music or anywhere that music can be streamed or bought and look it up. It's called The Whole Night, W-H, and it's uh, Caleb Palaha, C-A-L-E-B-P-O-L-A-H-A. Um, <clears throat> I've got a really cool guest today, and you're going to say, like, well, how does, how does your guest tie into Fatherhood February? Because we're, we're wrapping up Fatherhood February, and I will tell you how when, when I start asking her some questions. Her name is Laura Castleman. And she's a CEO um, among a a long list of accomplishments. She's a mother. Um, She used to be a rockette. And she's also an author. And she's written a book. And it's called Trust Your Increments, How How Small Consistent Steps Can Lead to Massive Success. And um, I wanted to have her come on the show because, A, if, if you've got a man in your life, he should read this book. It's kind of pure and simple. Um... It's just a really amazing book for women, about women, by a woman, in the business world, but also just about life and also just about how you succeed in life. Like all of these things are things that I have either put into practice or need to. And um, it's also from a perspective that I've not yet seen. And so it's an interesting, it was a a really eye-opening book for me to read. So... um, I would love for you guys to, to pick it up. Now, without any further ado, I'm going to bring her on to the show. Let me see where she is. Let's see. I always love this part of the Palaha Chautauqua when I am... And I'm also... I'm going to shut down the... Um, I'm going to shut down. Hi, Laura. Hi. How are you? Hi. I'm wonderful. And since it is um, your fatherhood, February, I am appropriately in my child's bedroom. There you go. So you can see my space tent back here. I love that. (laughs) I'm going to shut the comments off until the end of our conversation so that people don't, so that they can see your face instead of a bunch of scrolling as we go. Um, so hi, and welcome to the Palaha sure. Chautauqua. Thanks for joining me tonight. Thank yeah, you so much for having me. Pleasure. I'm I, um, I did a deep dive on you. I, I look at this. I'm, I'm, I gotta be honest. I've got a little to go, but I, I think I read enough in the last 
a day and a half to and look at our dog gear and I've I've marked pages. Yeah, you did a very I good job that. with this book. It's um you know, oftentimes we get um books that that want to teach us things and our perspective is always kind of like, well, what's, you know, what's the hook? And your hook is <laughs> your hook is fascinating. It's you've got a fascinating hook. Um and I'd love to talk to you about it. And one of the things that stuck out to me, first of all, let me, do you want to, for people who don't know you, do you want to introduce yourself and do you want to let people know? So why don't we, why don't we set the table? Let, okay, go, go ahead and how sure. I, I could do it for you, but I think you'll probably do a better job of it yourself. Go, go ahead. How, sure. I, I'm Laura Castleman. I am a CEO in the tech industry. So I am, there's, there's not a lot of females in the tech industry, especially at the executive level, but I'm also the co-founder of a media agency, Vita Street. I've written this book um, and I run some successful companies. We, we've been on the Inc. 5000 list multiple times. Um, so, you're so yeah, we're crushing doing some cool it. stuff In short, over here. you're crushing it. I had a little, uh, it, today I was like, <laughs> come, come and, and talk to my guest. She's a baller. You're gonna enjoy talking to her. Um, I wanna know, where do you mind talking about your dad and do you mind talking about where you came from like oh, one sure. of the chapters early on you were working as a you were working in a restaurant hotel and you were called up to a, like room 273 mm -hmm. and you knew the dude in room 273 was not up to much good and you called your daddy and your dad mm -hmm. said i'll be right there and like 20 mm -hmm. minutes later he said get in the car i'll be right out and he took he just handled it so for me I'm looking at a life, like, yeah. I think what's interesting, and I'm jumping right into this conversation about men and women, because I think you're both about men and women. I think this is Let's what the it. conversation is. I think a lot of times when you have a son, you say, oh, your son's so much like your father, your son's so much like your father. And then when we have a daughter, you say, oh, you're like a daddy's girl, you're a daddy's girl. But what happens, and I think where mm -hmm. we've gone wrong in society is that our parents should distill into us the best qualities of each of them so that our masculine men have also these strong feminine qualities from our mothers and our and women should have these strong masculine qualities from our fathers and that shouldn't be an issue that should be like yeah your dad did a good job your mom did a good job right. so i think your dad did a really i'm sure both of your parents gave you both parents credit but it sounds like your dad did a really remarkable job and there's a couple of references to him in the, in your book so what was your childhood like where did you grow up I grew up in the middle of nowhere, South Carolina, one stoplight town, and we had three television channels where I saw the Radio City Rockets perform on the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, and I was like, I'm going to do that, right? I declared it then before I knew what the secret or manifesting was. At three years old, I was going to be a Radio City Rocket, and yeah. I was, that was my way out of my small town. And right? when did that, you start was dancing? Was it, like, it's start, like literally three, at, three years old, you start three. dancing. Okay, and you make yes. the goal happen. So how does that happen? How do you go from a three-year-old kid who's like, I think I want to do this to actually going and doing it? How does that happen? Work the plan, small steps the whole way, which is also what the book is about. Um, started dance class, work the plan. Started in a traveling group, traveled, performed, got in front of audiences. By 16 wow. years old, I was dancing professionally. Okay, so work it was just plan. eye of the tiger all the way. Yes, and even like small town people, I think this is important to know as well because it's we see these big cities all the time, but not everyone in America lives in big cities. And we may not have all the resources that a wonderful city, like say New York when I was there with the Rockettes, but where there is a will, I truly believe there's a way. And I believe in having good arguments. So I would present my parents with this argument of I need to now drive an hour a day to this ballet class or I am no longer this is, you know, my dream will not happen. And my mom was like, great, convince the school board. So then I had to go and pitch to like my school board. I need to leave school early because I've got to now drive for something that you guys don't provide. And there's nothing around here that provides this for me or else I'll never okay. accomplish my dream. I have a question. You know? you. Do you feel like you were always a little different uh, than other people in general? Like growing up, did you feel a little like, I think I can go do this thing. Like, did you feel that you had that advantage in your life, like gutturally, regardless? Yeah, like, yeah. I think, uh, yes and no. I think I had a solid 
support system and community, not just my parents, but a community. I felt supported. I felt loved. I felt safe. So I, why not go after my dreams? Now, granted, I would fail all the time, but I was yeah, just yeah. like, failure's okay. Yeah. I'll start. And you have a chapter about that in your book too. Do you feel like the arts being, being a dancer and, and dealing with rejection and dealing with, because that's a really like, that's what I do. I'm an actor. What I do. Mm -hmm. um, thank you so much, by the way, for coming on my show. I really appreciate it. <laughs> it's like, I love that we're like for having literally me. just jumping in. Like we've had a thousand conversations before. And, yes. um, but so I'm an actor. Right. It's, what I, it's what I do. And, and like you, I came from Reno, Nevada. And it was one of those random things where I was like, I think I'm going to go do this thing. And I actually had to convince my parents to let me go to boarding yeah. school from, so from like fifth all the way to eighth grade, I had to create reasons. And, and we, I mean, literally just had to convince them because I knew that if I stayed in Reno, and God bless Reno, it's a great town, but if I stayed there, I was mm -hmm. going to kind of, I think I was going to end up staying there forever. Like, that was going to be my lot in life. And I wanted more, like you. I wanted to be a, a guy on the TV screen, a movie mm -hmm. screen. And, um, and yeah. yeah, there's something about pushing forward and, and almost vision casting with the people that love you to get their support. Mm -hmm. But being in the arts has also taught me that you're going to get said no to 10,000 times more than you're going to get said yes to. So how does that, knowing that, how does that translate into the business world? Because I bet, I would almost bet that mm -hmm. you get more yeses in the business world than you might in the arts. Is, am I wrong for thinking that? No, you're not wrong at all. And it, it, arts teaches you to accept the no and not to always take it personally. Sometimes the no is simply you have the wrong, you know, the wrong hair color yeah. or the, the whatever it is. There's, you don't have the right body type for this part right. that we're casting that's very specific. And it's not personal. Some, I even write in the book, for the jobs I got denied because I was blonde, I right. equally got that many jobs because I was a blonde dancer. You know, it just, it depends. And, and the casting directors are always looking for the person that can fill the role, right? It's not personal to you. They just need to meet this requirement. But you have to learn how to let it rejection roll off your back, like water off a duck's back. And it takes practice. It doesn't happen overnight. It takes practice. So I think that's also what made me good in sales, which made me be able to work in corporate America and climb the corporate ladder while I was dancing, is that I didn't mind the no in sales. The no was like, thank you. We've right. gotten past <laughs> that. Let's move to the next thing now. Uh, so in business, I think, yes, we get rejections. And I would definitely say I don't get as many no's. But I also know that the no doesn't necessarily mean that I'm not doing the right thing, that my product's not great, that what I'm presenting to the world isn't what it should be, it may mean I'm presenting it to the wrong person at the wrong place. And with business, you have to constantly weigh, is this the right thing? Right. Is it not the right thing? Am I in the right room? But yeah. that's kind of like life. Right. Am I in the right it room? It is, isn't it? When did you switch out? So tell me, so you became a rocket and how long were you a rocket? How long did you dance for professionally? So I had an 18 year professional career and the last five years of my dance career, okay. I was wow. a rocket. Um, and then why business? How did you like, I mean, I think a lot of people might have said, like, you know, dancing, I'm a rockette. And I think maybe I'm going to open a school or I'll, I'm going to, I'm going to parlay this into other things or what, like you pivoted and you're like, okay, I'm done with that world. And I'm now going to go focus on this thing. And so how, how did business happen for you? So I had a plan always. I taught dance when I was in college as well. So I knew that I never wanted to stop performing and then open a dance studio. That wasn't my path. So instantly I was doing my performing path and taking entry level jobs in the business world. And once I made the Rockettes, I would work three months out of the year at Radio City. And the rest of the year I was working in corporate America, okay. building two resumes at one time. So when I re retired from dance, I stepped wow. right into my first executive Yeah, I was a vice president of operations for a okay, CEO therapy cool. And you know, it's interesting because when I was reading your book, you are a teacher. I mean, this book is very much you giving lessons to young, you know, future CEOs saying, listen, you got to know these are the basic, this is the groundwork. This is just real human behavior that you need to know. Basically. Um, what, what were your, like, 
if you had to pick a chapter, what's your chapter? Like, what's your mm. go-to chapter? That's really tough because I do think one, we start off with confidence in the book. And I think so many people, to me, it's basic, but so many people do not have confidence. So many people don't believe in their own abilities. They don't know what they're good at doing and stand firmly behind that. And I think if you don't, it's something you have to work on immediately. You have to know what you're good at doing and you have to believe in yourself or else how are you supposed to convince anyone else to believe in what you bring to the table? So that, that one is a toss up between the mm -hmm. chapter about know your no, know your line, know when someone has met your line and this is it. I draw the line, I will no longer work this job. I will no longer accept this paycheck. It doesn't mean you have to be aggressive about it, but it, it means for your own well-being, for your own sanity in life, your own respect yeah. for yourself, you have to know your no in life. It's a really fascinating conversation because what you're talking about in your book is that the, the men are getting paid more than women. There's a woman in the, that had a PhD, her husband had a BA, and, and all she was wanting was like three grand more than her <laughs> husband. And you were like, you've had five kids, you've raised yeah. them, you've got a PhD, you're smarter than your husband, and you're asking for just barely a little bit more than him. And so I don't know what this looks like. I mean, you're talking to a guy, I'm six feet, four inches tall, a white dude in America. Yeah. Uh, I walk, have walked through the world and it, the world has, has treated me very kindly. And I've, I've been to Japan and people wanted to come up and you know touch me and I've been to India and I had a little trail of kids follow me because of the way I look. And it's a very interesting way walking through the world the way that I walk through the world. And what you, and what, this is why I want all the women out there who are watching this to, to buy this book for their husbands or to buy this for their sons or their brothers or whomever, because it was really eye opening to me to realize that you have to, in the morning, I take a shower, I think about like, do I want to let my face be long today or do I shave? And you're like, if I wear this dress, they might assume that I'm wanting to have sex with them or they might, if I do this, they're going to think I'm the, and so you were breaking it down based on how people reacted to colors and the length of your dress or the, which yes. boggles my mind because, you know, I'm like, is my hair looking good today? Like, <laughs> that's kind of the, you know, so mm -hmm. how does that, tell me a story, like, tell me something that may not be in the book about like, either, I don't need, I don't want dark experiences, but anything like, because I'm sure, sure. there's several. And then also I want something on the flip side of when you've seen someone come into your office and to your confidence note where you're just like, sister, you got to own what you have. And like, I bet you can see it almost immediately. Like they come in and they start apologizing or they'll come in and be like, so what are, what are some mm -hmm. random things that you've encountered that are just absolutely mind blowing that I wouldn't know about? Well, you know, I've talked about a lot of these things in the book, but like you said, you traveled to Japan. I can't remember. I think I flew to Ireland to give a speech. And one of the big comments was, wow, like I knew who Laura Kausman was and I know what she does for this industry, but she's just pretty. And I was like, here I am at a business conference. I want people to think my ideas are great. I want people to know that my product is great, that what I'm presenting has worth. But all I'm being talked about is how pretty I am. And that's cool-ish, but it's not enough. Right. I, I have yeah. worked really hard to be more than that in life. And that's not not necessarily what I'm thinking about during the day. Like, am I pretty? I'm thinking about, you know, am I presenting a solid business idea? Does this you know, pertain to multiple businesses outside of mine? Can this help other businesses grow? Does this have value? Does the return on investment make sense for everyone? Right. But while wow, she's pretty. So, you know, it's, it's a tough thing because you're like, are you hearing the words coming out of my mouth? because you don't know then. And since I'm here to close deals and I'm here for business, has this been a wasted flight? And, and it becomes really tough. On the other hand, you know, you have other women who I've seen women like totally dressed down, to not wear any makeup, say, I can't do that because then no one will take me seriously. And I, I'm like, okay, but you can't, right. you can't also not be who you are. You have to be who you are and you have to wear what makes you feel solid and comfortable. But at the same point in time, why can't you just right. listen to what we're saying? Right? Like it's, it's a weird, it's a weird thing to juggle that we shouldn't even have to think about. Men aren't thinking or hearing when they're giving talks in the, in the business world, like, Oh, 
they're so they think he I'm so cute. So like I'm totally gonna get close this business deal. That's not what's happening. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, Ke Kevin O'Leary's not out there speaking and people are like, he is so cute. You know what I mean? Like that's not happening. People are like, oh, he knows what he's talking about here. Okay, you are talking to an oh. actor on the Hallmark channel though, and I do get a lot of like <laughs> they're like, you know, there's a lot of front leading with the True. women going, okay. oh. You know, yeah. so what, well, I'm interested in this idea that you'll start <laughs> talking in a room and then the guys will literally start talk, talking. Like, what is this phenomenon? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is one of my favorite topics. So I'm so glad you brought it up. And in fact, I've been speaking about it a lot in the last week. Good men need to listen to this. When you are in a business setting or any setting and a woman is talking, let her finish. Do not interrupt. Do not say, I think what she's trying to say, I guarantee you that woman knows what she's trying to say. I can pretty much bet she's probably articulate and is educated, but in the business world in particular, it happens all the time. Someone will interrupt. I think what Laura's trying to say, but I witness it all the time with other women. Let her speak. She's articulate. She can say what she's been studying and presenting in this case for you. It's really an interesting thing. And so when men ask me, what can I do to support women? I'm like, just don't interrupt. Or if someone interrupts her, right. say, let her finish. Right. It's, it's, it, yeah. it's super yeah. simple. Because I know when I get interrupted and it doesn't matter if it's like within a conversation, you, you immediately are like, we're not, we're not gonna let me finish what I was saying. That's a weird feeling. Mm -hmm. um, and the fact that yeah. you are a CEO, so you're the top, you're the alpha in the room, and this is still occurring? Yes. Or I can be, you know, at a meeting with other executives and someone, I'll, I'll present an idea. Five, 10, 15 minutes later, someone regurgitates my idea, and it's the best thing everyone's heard. And I'm like, oh, so exactly what I said earlier. Okay, great. But you have to be careful in the way you present it back. And sometimes I will say, so as I was saying earlier, but I'm not going to be snarky about it. I'm just going to politely remind that was my idea 15 minutes ago. We've wasted 14 minutes to circle back around to the original idea that someone else could claim. And now you're listening because right. it's yeah. a man. Um, yeah, that just threw me for a loop because I was, just, I was literally thinking, I'm, I can't even imagine where you put out an idea and then someone usurps it 10 minutes later and you're like, oh, said that um you were talking about there was something in your book i wanted to reference oh it was just there and you and you and i went on that trip with you and i lost it um no it's okay because it was about oh the emails that they there was a guy girl and, and they're yeah. they started sending emails from each other's emails sign off as each other so now the man was sending the woman and the woman was signing off as the man and it was this interesting social mm -hmm. experiment. And she was like, dude, people are like responding on your first email and jumping to and saying, yes, and let's great idea. And the guy was like, I'm having to explain this like five different times. And I'm trying to like circle back yeah. and people are calling me kitten and. <laughs> yeah. It's mind blowing. In fact, based off of that study that was published, we did at my company, we had a female that was the head of our support desk and, you know, people were constantly going back and forth with her, which she would give the proper answer. Very clear. She would bullet point it out. She would attach an instructional video as well. You couldn't give people any more clearer answers. And then people would post on social media. I'm sorry, your help desk girl just doesn't seem to be, she doesn't seem to get it. If someone who truly knows what's going on could help me and I could type word for word what she had said because I'm the CEO, they would then listen. But I just copied and pasted her email to them already. But previously they wouldn't listen. So I said, I know exactly what you're gonna do. So let's say her name was Janet. I said, Janet, pick a man's name, any man's name from now on in support, you're that man. So Janet became John. And now people do not question John. No one posts on social media that John doesn't know what he's talking about. Everyone accepts the answer John gives, but it's actually the same woman that's been answering that's them so forever. So two weeks ago, I had this guy on uh, for this, for this, my, my dad's birthday was this month and, and, I, and he was, you know, I just wanted to celebrate him and I wanted to have a moment. So I, I wanted to have an excuse to have my dad on this, this show. And so I called him father in February and he was talking about be, being the men 
He's like, if you're going to be a dad, be the kind of man that you would want your daughter to marry. So a lot of these men you're working with, there are good guys in the marketplace. There, you have a ton of allies. There's, yes, so there's a lot tons, of good men out there. Tons. So let's just start the conversation with. But then for these bros who are hanging mm -hmm. back, like they have mothers and they have sisters and they have daughters probably. And they're, so it, it seems like there's this strange old school kind of old guard but do you feel like do you see light at the end of the tunnel you're an executive you're in the tech industry and there was an article about mm -hmm. i remember this was about six years ago how when did you get into the tech industry because i want to make sure this article is right timing wise oh okay. it's been, it's been okay, quite so do you remember then that article ago? that came out and they were like there are just hardly any women there was a big article and i remember reading it were you in the tech industry at that point or yes. had you gotten to it? okay yes Yes, okay. I was not yet the CEO. Okay. Of, so CEO of you were like a pioneer then because this, I can't remember exactly how long ago, and I should have done a little research before you jumped on, but mm -hmm. there was, they were saying there are no women. This is all a weird boys club and women, there's no room for women in this thing. The mm -hmm. conversations, the programming, the algorithms, all of it, tech is being designed for, you know, men. And, and it was, and specifically, it was kind of dudes who were digging Star Trek. And it was dudes who were very, like, so it was also a very certain type of guy that it was being geared towards. Um, do you feel like it's changing? Do you see a I do. Yes, it's changing in such a positive way. Some of the most recent technology that's amazing, ChatGPT, different things are designed by women. There, there are women spearheading the things that we are doing now that are going to define and probably change the way we do things in the next two to five years and i think that, a massive change awesome. women are spearheading that's, these things that's awesome and it's so incredible. you're seeing it on tech and like tech development level yeah that's exciting what company yeah. do you work for okay, okay. and what does jb do for the people Sue. who don't know sure we are a software company but we're an online marketplace with over 1 million okay. affiliates that can go. So if you have products and you want, and you want it to be, is it sort of um, promoted or brand cost branded or what is the technical, like what is the technical term for it? Like, so, so with the affiliate networks, it depends on how the owner of the product wants to pay out. And so what we do is we let the owner of the product list. This is the price of the product, but this is the percentage I'm Got paying it. anyone okay. promoting well, it. And your it book is available everywhere books are sold. Okay, I'm going to do this to the people Correct. can actually see. Hold on, there you go. So it's, it's Trust Your Increments. And where did you get the title? You, I think you sort of alluded to it at the beginning of our conversation with setting small goals and just moving forward, right? Absolutely. My whole life has been setting small goals. I do checklists every single day. I, I goal out my entire year, everything I want to accomplish. And it turns out that I wrote the book in incremental steps, very small consumable chapters or sections. And by the time it was over, that was where we were, trust your increments, even though that was not the intention. It was just like everything I do is small, incremental. Nothing I have done in life has been special or a massive change. It has all just accumulated to lead me to where I am. Um, it's funny, I, I set goals. Uh, it's something I've talked about in the beginning of every year, I'll do a, a year goal, like year long goals, five year goals and 10 year goals. And then I refresh those. And it's amazing the things that I've checked off those lists. When you put something, yes. Yes. yeah. I, no, when you put something on paper and yeah. you and you sort of steer the ship towards that, what were you gonna say? I was gonna say that's the same exact thing I do. And if you are looking at it every day, this is the goal and every day, you're working towards the goal, it happens. It's amazing what you can accomplish when you have a clear, clearly defined goal yeah, and yeah, you work the steps awesome. towards it. All right, well, I know that you were only planning to come on for a short time and I've kept you for a half an hour. So is there anything you want to sign off with? Is there anything you want to say to anybody listening? Yes, I think it's super important for people to know that people that accomplish great things in life, it's only because they don't give up and they work towards it every day. Nothing massive has to happen overnight. Small steps forward, baby steps. That's it. And you can reach awesome. what you want to remind. Laura, I feel like we're in the same tribe. I was reading your book and I was like, yeah, 
like you're, it, there's there's a way to move through the world and accomplish things and do it with grace and do it with kindness and do it with leadership and integrity and it sounds like you're doing those things and I love the fact that the legacy that you're leaving is this sort of booklet of how to and to go for it and to encourage other people and young women to to rise to the heights. So I'm going to open it up for comments real quick and then I'll let you go, okay? Now you're Sunday night right. and you've got, awesome. you've got a life. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to pull out the readers, guys. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see what we got. Um, I need readers. You can see, do you see me just like literally <laughs> squinting? My makeup, um, my makeup artist, Jen, has taken a series of pictures of me this week as I'm reading the sides with all of her readers. Um, okay, any questions, you guys? We have time for one or two questions if there's anybody who wants to ask. Okay. I do feel like I have Are to you seeing my kids? Song, yeah. My son just wrote a song. He released it yeah. last week. It's called The Whole Night. You got to check it out. That's beautiful, I will. actually. I definitely so I'm will. I'm really, really proud of him. How wild is it when your kids start doing things and becoming people? Is Dag Mine is, is two. Is Dagny? So um, I'll just yeah, tell you. She's two. Yes. That's a good age. Yes. Yeah, I'm looking forward um, to what she does okay. in her life. Excellent. Can we get the book in Canada? Yes. Yes, you can. Wherever you normally order your books. Yeah, Amazon online, up there is that one. Uh, I forget what it called. It's, uh, it starts with an I. Neat books. Um, Indigo, mm. I think, is the one. Yeah. Indigo yeah, is there. Yeah, and it, it's on Indigo. Um, all right. Well, any la last chance for a question? All right, I'm going to sign off then. Um, I'm going to turn the commenting off. Okay. Laura. Thank you so much for coming on the Chautauqua today. I appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm um, so I hope if there's ever you. anything you want to come back on and talk, we can we can have another conversation. I'd love to. And your dad, I remember in the book, he was a little health thing. He's doing good. We still got dad. Oh, yeah. Good. Okay. Good. Yes, that's great. Good. Thank you. Um, all right. Pleasure talking with you. All right. Be well. You, Bye. You as well. Bye. So there we go, guys. Go get her book, Laura Castleman, Trust Your Increments. It really is an exceptional read. And it's, it's, it's the kind of read that you can digest um, to be like, I was consuming it yesterday and today. Um, and so it's a very, she wrote, she wrote it really well. So it goes down easy. Um, all right, that's all I got. That's all I got. Apparently, there's a lag on these things. So Instagram's doing something funny with lives lately. So hopefully, our questions and answers are clear. Um, but that was the comment that I was getting, that there's a bit of a lag. All right, guys. I'm signing off. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.